Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School this morning. Um, one thing I will mention, next week we will be going to our classes for Sunday School. The adults will. So that'll be a, a nice change to get back to normalcy. Uh, this morning, our scripture is in Revelation, and that's kind of, it's intense when you get into Revelation. It's hard to just touch on the book with a few minutes, and each chapter has so much depth. Um, but we're going to try. And Melissa did a great job last week, so we're there also again in Revelation. So let us start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to be here in your house this morning. Dear God, we thank you for the words that we're about to hear, that maybe we can put them in our lives and take the knowledge that you have given each one of us from your scriptures and implement them in our lives, dear God, and just feel the power of your words. Be with all those that are not here, whether they be sick or traveling or what, whatever it may be. Just watch over them, dear God, and be with all those fighting this virus and just bring healing to this, to this nation. Amen. All right, our scripture is from Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 through 19, God of power. Now, Revelation has been traditionally understood to have been received by the churches in Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, during the last decade of the first century AD. And the key to understanding Revelation lies in recognizing the type of literature it's written, written in, which is apocalyptic. Apocalyptic literature features unveiling of the bigger picture, of a big picture reality by a heavenly being, God, to a human recipient, which is John, who wrote Revelation. The reality that is revealed includes elements of both time, which is dealing with end time salvation and judgment, and space, which is the reality of another supernatural world, heaven. So Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 through 19. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was. Because, of, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. Okay, one thing I want to um, clarify a little bit in that scripture, sometimes, and I do it too, we take it at its word and put it for what we're living right now. Verse 18, it said, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. That's not climate change. That's not something we're talking about now. And it's the commentary. We should be careful not to read 21st century concerns into this statement. In this text, destroying the earth refers to... Um, 
what was happening in the biblical times, not what's happening now. So what does today's lesson mean to us? Keep hope and Christ in mind, as well as the fact that God is understandable and approachable. He's God of power. In devastating times of stress and war, to fathom something such as the temple or our church being destroyed would make it seem like God has lost. But the message here is one of victory. It is a call to trust in him and continue our walk in faith. God is still in control and he does win. He allows things to happen as consequences for sin. Yet in his perfect plan, all things come together to give him glory. And that's in Romans also. Everything that happens in Revelation refers back to Old and New Testament, things that have happened and will and are to come. We are also shown that when all seems lost in our personal lives, when people and events come against God and his faithful, they really don't win. They're not the winners. No enemy can do to us what God does not allow. Nothing that could really effectively eternally hurt us. Those who do evil will be judged beyond what we could or want to happen to them. They get their deserved what is coming as we who are faithful get our reward, eternal life. The key is to trust God. Be assured and confident that he is reigning. He is in control. He is the God of power, and he is the winner. This may sound a little harsh, but the judgments that all these will see, they're deserved. Do not mourn for those who continually refuse to repent while dragging others down with them. These people want the judgment by their refusal to reconcile to or to recognize the sovereignty of our Lord and by their contradictory evil ways. They know better, but in spite of it, they still sin. There is no sadness or grief on their part, and there is none needed by those of us who will remain faithful. The choice is before us. We can accept the love, forgiveness, and grace of our Lord, or we can refuse it, and we know what the consequence of that is. But it isn't too late. Here's the good news of our God of power. It's never too late. There is no sin too big and nothing we've ever done too bad for him to forgive us. All we have to do is repent. Our God of power, our God is a God of power, of forgiveness and love. And he never turns his back on us. So let this be the day that you come before our God and let this be the day of repentance. For one day when you read Revelation and you get to the end of the Bible, there is going to be payment. So we need to live our lives with love and let us be forgiving. We need to be forgiving. Let's bring others to know him and know that he is a God of love and forgiveness. Anyone have any comments? We'll close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these words and we want to bring them into our hearts and we know that you are the all-powerful, dear God but you are a, a God who forgives, who understands, and we can always reach out to you. Just keep us all strong. Keep us walking the way you want us to, dear God. And be with those who do not know you. 
We just ask that you help us to reach them. Amen.